Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. We're up to part six of my students and parents database. Hope you're enjoying the series. If you haven't watched parts one through five yet, you know what to do. Go watch those and come on back. All right, so in the last video, we set up our query. So we've got all the information that we want and need in our phone list. Let's go ahead and build a report. Now in my blank template, which by the way, you can get a copy of this off my website, I've got a blank R. This just has my default settings that I like. I got the page size, the margins, all that stuff already set up. So I don't have to keep doing it every time I make a report. So I'm just gonna copy this guy. So copy, paste, this will be my student, uh, parent, phone, R. My report, and now we can design view this guy. Now report, I'm gonna turn this off real quick. Uh, reports, I find it's easier to work with reports while they're maximized. So I always maximize reports when I'm working on them. I don't know, it's just my preference. Forms, I like to see how big the form is going to be on the screen. Reports, doesn't matter. I'm going to print this out anyways or make a PDF out of it, right? We're going to set the record source of this report to the query that we just built. So open up the properties by double-clicking right there where that little box is, right? Go to data. The record source is going to be that query, the student, parent, phone, Q, that guy. Okay, close that. Now, I want to group this by student, right? I want each student to appear in order, right? So we're going to group by student ID so that the student appears and then his parents appear underneath him. Okay, so we're going to turn on a grouping level. Go to report design, group and sort. That's the thing that I just turned off a second ago because I wanted to see, how, I wanted to show you how you turn it on, right? Okay. Add a group, we're gonna group by student ID. And I also wanna sort it by last name and first name. All right, so we're gonna add a sort by the student last name, and then add another sort by the student first name. Okay, see how that works? And yes, some of you who are sharp and have a lot of experience with reports might see the problem, which I'm doing it this way intentionally. Because in my classes, this is how I see everybody make this mistake. So just, just bear with me for now. Bear with me. Okay. All right. All right. So when we created the student ID group header, it gave us a student ID header right here. We don't need a footer, just a header. Okay. And here is where I'm going to put the student's name. So I'm going to go to add existing fields. I'm going to bring in student first name and student last name. Bring them over here. Drop them like that. And I'm going to delete these labels. Let's put the last name over here and the first name next to it, like so. Okay, we can shrink that up a little bit. And then here in the details section, let me delete this. That's where we can put the parents information, right? This stuff here. Click, drag, drop, delete the labels. We're going to go last name, first name, and then phone number next to it, like that. We'll make it pretty in a minute, don't worry. All right. Close that up, shrink this like so. Looks pretty good so far, right? Let's save it and let's get a print preview. You can just click anywhere up here in the ruler bar, right click, print preview, and okay, it's not too bad. Let's get rid of all these boxes around everything and this alternating background color, that is for the header, the student header. I wanna make it so that all of the students have that gray. That looks pretty nice, right? Right click, design view. Let's get rid of all those boxes. So I'm gonna select everybody just like that. Right, clicking in the ruler there. Format, shape outline. Let's go transparent. And let's also go shape fill transparent. So these are all transparent boxes. Now for the student ID header, double click on that. Go to format. I'm gonna set the back color two let's go with uh let's go dot 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 let's go with like a light gray like that one and then the alternate back color we're going to set the no color so that every student is gray and then the parents underneath them are in white i think that'll look better maybe bold this right okay save it let's right click print preview all right look looks much better looks really good okay now I hinted to this in the last video. Let's put first name and last name together here. So it's not Kirk, big space, Bobby. I want Kirk, comma, Bobby. Okay, right click, design view. 
Get rid of the first name field. We'll make one big text box here with both of those in it. Okay, double click and let's go to data. And it's student t last name. I'm going to zoom in so you can see this better. Okay, I want this to be equal to student t last name and quote comma quote 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 comma space quote and student t dot first name just like that. Now when I hit OK, Access puts the brackets around it for me automatically. Let me zoom in again so you can see that. Okay, all right, that's that looks normal. That looks right. Okay, let's save it. And let's print preview. And uh, 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 enter parameter value student t. What's that? I shouldn't be getting this. I don't want. What? What's that all about? Okay, I'm getting pound names here. Now, this is one of my biggest pet peeves when it comes to reports and access. Okay, take a look at what we got here. Student t dot last name. This is perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with this. If you do this in a query, it works just fine, right? Let's go, let's go to a query real quick. Create query design. Give me, uh, give me student T, right? Here's first name, last name, and I'm going to make a new field. Let's call it full name, which is student T dot first name and a space and student T dot last name. Okay, all right, let's hit okay. All right, access puts the brackets around everything for me. All right, I'll zoom in again to show you. Looks good. Okay, and if I run this query now, everything works fine. No problem. What's the deal with the report? Why isn't this working in a report? It's the same thing, right? But when you run it, well, pre preview it, it doesn't work. All right, Sammy, definitely add this onto the access irritating list, okay? What you have to do in forms and reports is this. You have to have student T here because you can't just say last name, right? You got student T last name and you got parent T last name. Here's how you fix it. This is why I wanted to make sure I left this in the video instead of just making this a field in the query. You got to do this. Look at that. Leave the bracket around the whole thing. But you got to have the student t dot first name, student t dot last name. This is different behavior than how it works in a query, how it works in an SQL statement. In forms and reports, you got to do it this way. It's irritating. I know. I didn't make it this way. This is just how you got to do it. Okay. And now, for in preview. Oop, hang on. What do I do? Oh, I didn't catch this. I've got a circular reference here, and the circular reference is because the name of the object itself is student t last name. So you got to change that. Just call it student name. Okay, it can't refer to itself. All right, and now there you go. Ah, type. What am I going to type error for? Hold on a second. No, it. It changed it here. See, this is where Access is trying to be helpful, and it's not. I changed the name of the control, and it also changed it down here. I mean, that's no, I didn't want you to do that. <laughs> Student T dot last name. See, sometimes that auto renaming of stuff can actually be a hindrance. All right, third time's a charm. Ready? There we go. Okay. That's what I was basically trying to show you. And the same thing will happen with the parent name, too. So we come in here and we can get rid of parent t dot first name just like that. We'll come over here. We'll call this parent name. Make the control source equals parent t dot last name all in brackets and parent t dot first name just like that. Hit OK. Save it, right click, print preview, and there we go. Looks good, looks good. Now, you might be saying to yourself, self, that list isn't properly alphabetized by the student name, right? We got Kirk, then Spock, then McCoy, M should be above S. What's going on there? Well, 
we did the grouping first, then we did the sorting. If you look at our lists down here at our levels, let me turn this thing off so you can see it better, right? We did the group by student first. That's going to go first. And I know, like I said at the top of the video, some of you who are astute might have caught that. But I wanted to do this so I could show you how to move this stuff around. What you want to do is first sort by last name, then by sort by first name, and then group by student. Right? Because the first name, last name is going to be the same. The only time you're going to have a conflict here is if you have two students with the exact same last name and first name. But then you want to group by student ID after you do these things. So how do we do this? Well, come all the way over here to the right. See these little arrows here? We're going to move the student ID down. Move it down and then move it down again. Now it's going to first sort by student last name, then by first name, and then it will group by student ID. All right, save it, right click, print preview, and now you'll see they're properly sorted. Kirk, Bobby, Kirk, Sue, McCoy, Scott, Spock, and so on. Like, there we go. Looks are good? Looks are good. If you want to learn more about these grouping level thingies, I got a whole separate video on them, and I cover them a lot in a lot of my different classes uh, in my Access Expert series. Tons and tons of videos on my website. Check them out. I'll put links to all that down below. Got more feedback from you guys. Uh, the next thing that people want to see is, okay, hey, I'm adding a student. Okay, I go and I add a new student. Let's call him new guy, Smith. And I want to add his parents now, but they're not already in the parent list. So now I got to close this form. I got to go over here. I got to add them. I got to close this. I got to refresh. Is there an easy way to add them to this? Well, yes, we can. We can use something called a list items edit form. I'm going to show you how to do that in the next class. And I'm going to show you how to make buttons to that on the main menu. It'll open up a list. You can add people, change people, do all kinds of stuff. That's coming up in the next video. That'll be part seven tomorrow. So stick around. Come on back. Well, stick around. Come on back. I guess stick around. Stay on my channel. Stay on my website. Watch more videos while you're waiting. Or you can sign up and be a member and you can watch it right now. But that's going to be your tech help video for today. Hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you tomorrow for part seven. A special thank you and shout out to our diamond sponsor, Juan Soto with Access Experts Software Solutions. They're manufacturing experts specializing in Microsoft Access and SQL Server. Juan is a 13-time Microsoft Access MVP. Check them out at accessexperts.com. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free access level one course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, 
and more. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours. Go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four-hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two, it's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members, Get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a Diamond Sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a Sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.